Our research is about academic freedom, as it applies in particular in relation to social sciences in Ireland. And uh, I suppose it's also about another dimension to that, which is the way in which universities and higher education students are managed, or what we call new managerialism, and its impact on that freedom. So I suppose one of the first points that will come from our research is how the commercialization of the universities, in the sense that everything is being monetized, including the social sciences, uh, how that impacts on the kind of scholarly work that people do. And the more things are monetized and the more they're commercialized, we would argue that that's a major threat to academic freedom, especially where people are critical of powerful institutions like the state or financial institutions or business institutions. Because when you start to criticize people, of course, and that's the nature of your search is to be critical, well, then people don't want to fund it. So I think that the university has, is working in the public interest. And it is absolutely important that we remain disinterested. And disinterested means that we are not tied to vested interests. So I think that's a very important point that we would make. And we would say that there are other kind of threats to academic freedom as well. I suppose in the way our academic life is organized, uh, many people now feel that they have to work, uh, especially young people, people on contracts. There's a rise of what we call precarious workers many of whom do not free to criticise because they're afraid they won't get jobs. They're afraid that somebody will know them to be a critical person. And we already think that that is another threat in the rise of precarious working, temporary contracts to academic freedom. So I suppose those are the main points that we are making in our research. Universities are one of the few places in society and other higher education institutions, including institutes of technology, where people are granted the freedom from necessity to think and to write. So individual freedom is what people often talk about, and that's very important, and that's protected by law. But individual freedom is not enough. We need to have collective freedom to create new disciplines, new ways of thinking, new ways of analysing the world, and especially being critical of power and institutions of power. So we think it matters a lot, because if you want to bring about change in the world, Often you have to challenge vested interests, and vested interests are often in positions of power. Sometimes it's the professions, sometimes it's financial institutions, sometimes it's the government, sometimes it's civil society. So we think all of that matters because this is only free space. If you think of who creates ideas in society, who creates our vision of the world, a lot of it is created through the media. And that is mostly commercially controlled, either directly through advertising, uh, um, through ownership, or indirectly through advertising. But the universities and higher education institutions are open spaces. We are public institutions working in the public interest. And therefore, I think it is really important that that space is kept open and that people are allowed and enabled to be critical and to establish new disciplines. I also think it's very important that if we're talking about social justice and equality issues, that we take the voices from below and not think that we can get to know other people's worlds without listening to them and hearing what they say and letting them inform what is a priority in our research. And I would take the Traveller as an example. We started an initiative in UCD which says the Travellers should be in control of their own voice. They should be the people who write about their own world and in control of it, including in the university.